Hi there! Today, I'll be teaching you how to write a research paper, particularly research introduction. So, welcome to my channel. Alright, so I think perhaps you are wondering how to write really a research paper. And perhaps you're wondering, ano kayo lalagay ko sa research introduction? Blah, 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 and so. Ngayon, at the end of this video, you shall be able to learn what is research introduction and the main goal of research introduction as well as you will learn how to write research introduction as well as understand the importance of literature in completing the picture of your research. Okay, now. You might be wondering, ano nga ba kasi ang research introduction? Research introduction actually shows your reader what to expect or what is your study about. Ano yung i-study mo or ano yung pinag-aaralan or ano yung i-research mo as the researcher. Alright? So, from the research introduction, you can see here um, the significance of your study. Why did you conduct the study? Alright? Your objective, ano yung mga layunin mo, yung mga reason, bakit mo kinandak yung study. Besides that, it should have conceptual framework or theoretical framework, depende sa requirement ng teacher ninyo. But in here, yung conceptual framework, these are the, it explains the interrelationship of variables. Okay? And also, it should contain your statement of the problem. Meaning, ito yung mga main problems or main questions that your research will answer. And also, hypotheses. Okay, now let's begin. Sir, sinasabi mo ang research introduction. So, ano ang dapat namin ilagay sa research introduction namin? Okay, so let's answer that question. So, in your research introduction, you should write, or you can start rather, writing it by discussing the situation of your research topic or problem. In Filipino, kailangan mong banggitin, i-describe, tukuyin, ano nga ba yung sitwasyon, yung context na tinatawag natin, yung atmosphere ng topic or problem that you want to answer or that your research is all about. For example, gusto mong pag-aralan yung working students and their academic performance. So, dito sa ating example, um, ano ba ang current situation ng mga working students sa Pilipinas? There. So, for you to begin with your topic, you have to discuss, uh, sikat ba ang working student? Marami bang working students sa Pilipinas? Or ilang taon kaya ang mga working students? Ano kaya ang mga grades nila? Matataas ba? Or mabababa? Ba? There. Meaning, you are now um, discussing okay the problem or the topic of your research okay and for you to have a clearer picture you can discuss this by following either of these two the top-down approach or yung tinatawag nating bottom-up approach pero ano nga ba ang pagkakaiba nila okay unahin natin ang top-down approach for the top-down approach you are going to discuss okay your topic from a broad perspective to a specific perspective or approach. Paano yun, sir? Okay, let's use our previous example. In terms of discussing under top-down approach, okay, look at your topic from a broader perspective, mas malawak na context. Okay, so let's say working students. Mm -hmm you can discuss saan ba nagsimula ang working student or in other countries, ano ba yung situation ng working students at il anong mga bansa ang may mga maraming working students and so on. So there, that's a broad um, spectrum, okay? That is an international level. Why? Because it comprises or it composes of different countries and so on, okay? Now, after nung international level, you, you may now uh, go down to a, a more specific okay example in the Philippines there ginagawa mo ng national mas pinalalapit mo na doon sa lokal or doon sa area of the study mo so for example in the Philippines ang common na trabaho ng mga working students ay either um, sellers or waiting tables yung nagwa waitress waiters 
or yung nagtatrabaho sa mga fast food chain. Okay, ngayon, ipunta ka naman sa pinaka mas specific ka na. Okay, halimbawa, in Baguio City, the work of, of working students are doon sa nagbebenta ng pasalubong there. So, nagiging local na siya. So, from international yung topic mo, okay, yung atake, alright, ng discussion mo, hanggang sa naging local na siya, hanggang sa nailapit mo na siya doon sa area of study mo. Okay? Ngayon, sa bottom-up approach naman, baliktad naman siya. Okay? Uunahin mo naman yung specific to broad approach. Okay? So, babaliktad rin mo lang siya. Halimbawa, um, your topic is all about working student. Remember? In your study, um, i-discuss mo na, in your introduction, pag-uusapan mo na yung ano ba ang estado ng mga working students? Halimbawa sa Baguio City, ano yung mga klaseng trabaho ang ginagawa nila? Ilang taon yung mga working student? Ano ba sila? College student or senior high school student or junior high school or elementary? Okay, pero working student sila. There. Ngayon, pumunta ka naman sa national. So, mas malawak na. Ngayon, sa Pilipinas, ito ang mas maraming ano, um, working student. We have uh, 10,000 working students in college. 10,000 in senior high school, mga ganun, okay? And then, punta ka ngayon sa mas malawak na. So, sa ibang bansa, ganito naman. Sa China, ang common na trabaho ng mga working students ay ganito. Or, um, ito naman yung number ng working students sa South Korea. There. In short, from local or from a specific perspective or approach to a wider, okay, or broader approach. Alright? So, yun ang tinatawag natin current situation or that's how you begin with your introduction. Ano ulit yun? You're going to begin, describe the situation or the topic of your problem. Okay. Nag-gets po ba? Next. After mo, after mo gamitan ng situation and everything, of course, kailangan mo dyan yung related literatures para mabuo mo yung kwento. Okay? Siyempre, para masabi mo na ah, ito pala ang kwento ng mga working students sa national or sa international, I mean sa China. And so, kailangan mo ng related literatures. Then mo na kailangan mag-research ka na, magbasa-basa ka na. ba? Para makompleto mo yung current situation ng working students. Okay? Kahit pa top-down approach or bottom approach, bottom-up approach, I mean, Kailan mo ng related literatures dyan. Ano yung mga researches na nagde-describe ng mga working students? Sa Pilipinas man, sa Baguio City man, sa Manila man, and so on and so forth. Kaya malaga ang pagbabasa at pagre-research. Okay? Sa mga libro and international uh, internet sources. Okay? Now, after mo ma-state, okay? Ma-describe kung anong current situation or yung problem na gusto mong Malama, malaman, may kwento sa research, you have to talk about now your reason or your motivation, your justification. You have to elaborate to discuss, alright, why you want to study that research topic, okay, or to that research problem. Okay, magagawa mo yan sa isang pamamaraan gaya ng research gap. Ano ba ang research gap, sir? When we say research gap, these are the areas, okay, in a research or a topic in a research wherein previous researches did not delve into or focus their attention, okay, na kung saan you think, you believe na it needs elaboration, na it needs na kailang pag-usapan. Okay, so that is research gap. Ibig sabihin, doon papasok yung reason kung bakit mo kinakandak ang study na to. Halimbawa, you can say na um, yung study na ginawa ni blah 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 ay nag-focus lang sa anong klaseng trabaho ng mga Chinese students, working Chinese students. Okay, ngayon naman sa ibang studies, ito naman, um, most na na-study nila ay mga college students. Which, don, dyan mo na ipapasok yung study mo. Halimbawa, sasabi mo, since most na mga nabasa naming research ay tungkol sa college students, wala o iilan kasi ang nakasulat sa senior high school students ngayon, ito naman ang purpose ng study namin. Kailangan o gusto naming malaman, ano nga ba ang estado, ano ang kasalukuyang 
uh, klase ng trabaho at paano na impluwensyahan, ano ba ang epekto ng pagtatrabaho ng senior high school students sa kanilang academic performance or sa kanilang status sa kanilang pag-aaral. There, that is what you call research gap. Okay, ibig sabihin, yung blanco, yung gap, okay, ay pupunan ng inyong research. That is one reason sa pagpili ng research topic or research problem. Okay, or motivation. Anong motivate? Anong nagko-convince sa inyo na yan ang pag-aralan ninyo, na yan ang i-study ninyo? Okay? Or, may nakikita kang problem that is why you decided to come up with a research I-research mo ano ba ang problema dito and what is the best or what you think is a good solution to that problem. Okay? Ilan lang yan sa mga reason or motivation, justification sa pagpili ng research. Mm-hmm. And of course, besides that, you also have to include your objective. What is the purpose of your topic? Okay? It seems na pareho sila, pero kapag sinabi mo kasing objective, mas straightforward, mas merong uh, nakapoint, okay? nakabulit kung kanino mo uh, inaalay or para kanino yung research na ito. Okay? Possible contribution. Halimbawa sa ating example, sa mga working students, ngayon kapag research mo ang effect ng uh, academic performance or ng pagtatrabaho habang nag-aaral, okay? Sino ang magbe-benefit doon? Ano yung possible na purpose doon? Right? Halimbawa, nalaman mo na uh, naapektuhan sila dahil sa scheduling nila, hindi sila maka-review, hindi nila ma-manage yung time nila, napapagod sila. Ngayon, your research, ano ngayon ang ang solution niya or ano ngayon ang purpose na may tutulong niya doon sa working students. Halimbawa, uh, to, to the university or to the academic, to the school or the educational institutions wherein ang mga working students na nag-aaral na ito ay maaring, baka maaring um, they allow their students to choose the subjects and the hours that they can enter into so that um, uh, hindi na sacrifice yung trabaho at yung pag-aaral nila at the same time. Just like that. Okay? Ibig sabihin, may patutunguhan yung research mo. Yun kasi yung objective mo. Right? Again, yung objective mo, ano yung purpose mo? Bakit mo ini-study yan? Meron ba? Baka wala naman. Baka pumasa lang. <laughs> of course, you have, to, you have to also pass the subject, right? Okay. Or perhaps yung community. Let's say, ang, ang study ninyo ay, ano ba yung pananaw ng mga jeepney operators or drivers doon sa jeepney modernization? Okay? O, oh, bakit mo ikakandak yan? Bakit mo ini-study yan? Ano yung purpose mo? Para matulungan yung mga drivers. Paano? Paano yan nakakatulong sa mga drivers? Okay? Halimbawa, nalaman mo na, um, most of the drivers po kasi ay walang pambili ng modern jeep. Ngayon, anong sasuggest mo? To the government? Or to the uh, municipal mayor? Or to the LGU? Ayan. Diyan po mapasok yung objectives. In short, dapat malinaw yung purpose mo. Okay? Ganun din naman ang buhay. Dapat alam mo rin yung purpose mo. Now, let's move on. So, after yung objectives, okay, you can start now with your conceptual framework. Sa conceptual framework, it presents the structure or yung flow, actually, ng study mo. And most of the time, it shows the interrelationship, yung connection ng mga variables. Well, I have another video discussing input-output process, and so on and so forth. Yung conceptual framework, paano gumawa or sumulat ng conceptual framework ng research. Perhaps you can check that. Okay? Nandito rin sa YouTube yun. Search mo lang yung pangalan ko and then paano sumulat or gumawa ng conceptual framework. I-type mo na lang yun. Okay? And also, after ng conceptual framework, kailangan mo nang ilahan. Ano yung main questions? Okay? Questions that you want to answer in your research. And most of the time, tatlo, apat, lima, anim, ganun yung statement of the problem. Okay? Pag sinami mo statement of the problem, this is the question, sub-questions that you want to answer in your study. Now, let's go back with our example. Since our example earlier is that we want to know the effect or is there really an effect of work 
okay? Especially working students to their academic performance. Since that is our issue, that is our topic, our question might be, or our statement of problem can be, what jobs do working students have in Baguio City? There, in that statement of the problem, you can see very specific, right? Anong klase ng trabaho ang ginagawa, pinagsisikapang gawin ng mga working students sa Baguio City? There, kasi nga, ang gusto nating pag-aralan, syempre, ay yung mga working students. Ano ba yung klase ng trabaho nila? Ano yung mga shifts nila? Ganon. Okay. And paano namin na-manage yung kanilang pag-aaral? Mga ganun ba? So again, you have to make sure that your statement of the problem is related to your topic, of course. Okay. And after the statement of the problem, uh, most, most, na alam mong research ay nag-end sa statement of the problem. But sometimes, okay, kapag very scientific and quantitative yung study, most of the time, meron din silang hypothesis. Ito yung hypothesis, yung nala hypothesis, kumbaga ito yung mga expected output or outcome rather ng research. Okay? So, there. Now, I hope na naintindihan ninyo yung topic o yung paggawa ng research introduction. Okay? So, ngayon, alam mo na kung paano magsimula ng research introduction. Pwede mong unahin, you state the situation. Ano bang nangyayari sa issue or sa problem, sa topic nyo? Okay? And you can, that, you can discuss that through the current situation or sa, rather, you can discuss that through top-down approach or bottom-up approach. Depends sa inyo kung ano ang mas, sa tingin nyo mas maganda. Okay? At mas coherent ka sa pag-represent or mas malinaw. Okay? Or pwede you can ask your teacher also. And you can also add your reason, your justification. Bakit yan pinili mong topic? Pinili yung topic. Okay? Kasi mahalaga na kapag nagsusulat ng research, ay gusto ninyo yung pinag-aaralan ninyo. Okay? Kasi ang danger pag hindi nyo gusto yung topic, hindi nyo matatapos on time, o hindi mag-redipit kayo. Joke. Okay? And also, your objective. Bakit nyo kailangan yung study yan? Mm -hmm. Conceptual framework, same with the problem. And there you have it. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope that you learned something from me.